taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You may all be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Before uh, I, I uh, share the, the message of God today, I'm sh do we have any uh, uh, first-time visitors today? Do we have visitors today that we would like to, uh, to welcome them? In yes, Brooke. Yes, praise God. Yeah, praise God. Welcome to our church. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Let us pray. Oh, Holy Spirit, Lord, take full control of every soul in this church right now. You know the needs of your people. We'll be listening, O oh Lord, to your word. And Lord, today I submit myself to you so that you can use me in what, whichever way you want to. And as your servant, I choose to, glor to glorify only you, O oh Lord. And I do not want any glory for me because I am just a clay in your hands. Lord, thank you for girding me with your special grace, your power, and your strength, O oh Lord. And I take victory in your mighty name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. We are followers of Jesus. We're disciples of Jesus. But we are not yet in heaven. Amen. We're not yet in heaven. And because we are not yet in heaven, church, the good Lord wants us to do something for his kingdom. He wants us to continue his mission here on earth. And that is, that mission is to witness. Amen. Our text today is called the, uh, the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus is saying to all of us to go, to go and be my witnesses. You are a witness. If you, you have already accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know that you are a witness of Jesus. If you have been coming also to uh, the traditional service, which is at 8.30, there in the traditional service, they always pray Sunday after Sunday the Lord's Prayer. And I am sure you have heard already about it and perhaps pray, pray that with fellow believers as part of the tradition of the church. And in the Lord's Prayer we say, Thy kingdom come. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. But just my question is, how can the kingdom of God come on earth if the world is not ready to accept it? And the world will never accept it if, if, if someone will not, will not do something to witness for the kingdom of God. I am a, a witness. You are all witnesses. If you have Jesus in your heart right now, you are a witness of the gospel God is waiting for us to do something to prepare the world that God's kingdom may come here on earth. And that is our mission. And in fulfilling this mission, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Yes, it's, it's true. Education can help. It is true that not only education, but also training can help. But the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, it says, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord Almighty. The source of that power to witness is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit just uses us. Amen. And if you connect everything when Jesus said in Matthew 28, go and make disciples, go and be my witnesses. Connect it to, to, to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus said to this, the disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit, church, is the central power and believers must be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses. You know, if the Holy Spirit is in your heart, there is a zeal for the lost. That's why I always say this. You always hear the word overflow. As a pastor, as a theologian, I want to use the word overflow. When you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior already, you will become an overflow. Overflow of peace. Amen? Overflow of uh, love, of grace. The Lord will not just give you a little, amen? But He will give you much more than what you expect. That you become an overflow, that it's impossible for you to hide it and to keep it, amen? You cannot just keep the love of Jesus. Just, I'll just stay at home, pastor. I, I'm a secret service of the army of the Lord. No, you can't do that. You become an overflow so that people around you will see the light of Jesus. People around you will see the love of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason for that is Jesus wants you to be a witness. Can you say these words to the person near you? You are a witness. Hallelujah. You are all witnesses. And if you are new, if you are new in your faith, I would say, you will also be a witness. Amen. God has not brought you here. Uh, it's not an accident that you are here right now. This is the plan of God for you. Amen. God wants to bless you. God wants to, 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 to have you as to, 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 to be to, to have you in his team, team of witnesses for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Always bear in mind, church, that the reason why Jesus resurrected and has given us eternal life is for us to be witnesses for him. That's why in our text today, Jesus is saying, Go, go, go and be my witnesses. The word witness in the biblical parlance, it comes from the Greek word martyrian, from which we have also received the English word martyr. But the word martyrian is the word for, for, for uh, witness. And Jesus calls us to be ready always to be witnesses for his kingdom. In the original Greek New Testament, they use the word martyrian. God, through Jesus Christ, calls each and every one of us to be witnesses for his kingdom, to be a witness to who Jesus is, to be a witness for all the things that Jesus has done and Jesus has been doing and will always do for us. That means to show with your words, amen, to show with your actions in your life to whom your real loyalty lies, to whom we're to where the bedrock of your faith lies, that you believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, that you believe that He is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. And that is the call of God for me and for all of you. That is the call of God. Go and make disciples of all nations. In the United Methodist Church, we have embraced that as part of our mission and vision and goal in our ministry as uh, members of the umbrella of the United Methodist Church to go 
and make disciples, to transform the world by making disciples of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a round of applause? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Church, you are a witness for Jesus Christ. You are, you, are, you are called by God to tell people how much Jesus loves them. You need to share your faith, to be a witness, to give other people the chance to experience Jesus, that they be healed, that they also be comforted, that they also be restored, that they too will have the assurance of life in heaven forever and ever. Hallelujah. That's why I will always be here reminding all of you that we are all witnesses for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Remember, you are here because someone brought you here. Amen? Even me. It could be your mother. Amen? Your parents, your, your mom, your dad. It could be a friend. Would someone say here that no one brought them here or no one uh, led them to faith? No, all of us. And just imagine if, if that someone did not step up and, and did something for the kingdom of God. You will not be here. I will not be here, brothers and sisters. And that will be remembered for eternity if you do something for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, I would like to ask you this question, church. Church. Will you and the things you do be remembered in eternity? Well, Pastor Louis, I am the best in sports. You know, Jesus will say, so what? Pastor Louis, I can lift 300 kilograms of weights. And Jesus is here right now. And he wants to say, so what? Pastor Louis, I am really smart. I am, I am good in academics. Jesus will say, so what? It's, while I was growing up, I did this and I did that. I excelled in academics. I excelled in sports. I excelled in other extracurricular activities. I excelled in everything that I do. But Jesus is, was saying to me, so what? I excelled. I, I excelled academically. I finished uh, my bachelor's, my master's, and doctor's degree in fly, with flying colors. I was always on top. I excelled academically. I, I, in fact, even when I was at the seminary, I was summa cum laude and I was accelerated. But Jesus is saying, so what, Pastor Louis? Are you really doing something for the kingdom of God? Are you really witnessing for my kingdom? Did I do something for Jesus and his kingdom? Am I truly obeying the great commission of Jesus Christ to go and make disciples? Am I participating in the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ? When I was uh, younger, about between 18 to 25 years old, I was, I was really, I was a basketball player before, but that was only from 18 to 25. That was my prime years basketball and I was a tall point guard in the Philippines I was a tall point guard I did triple double I can I scored 40 points 50 points but Jesus was saying so what So what if you have scored 50 points in basketball? So what if you have scored four touchdowns in, in football? So what? So what if you, if you have done this? So what if you are good in academics? So what if you are a doctor? So what if you are a lawyer? So what if you are a, an, a, an accountant? So what if you are a genius? So what if you are a good pianist or an excellent guitar player or an excellent singer? So what? Are you allowing the Lord to use these talents and these gifts for the propagation of the work of the gospel? 
Well, Pastor Louie, I am expert and I know 10 different languages. But Jesus is saying right now, so what? It's better if you know one language only, but you're allowing yourself and your language for the propagation of the gospel. Church, anything that you have right now, anything that you possess right now, anything that you have, you have right now, your talents and your gifts in the kingdom of God, that is nothing if you don't speak and testify for Jesus. That is nothing in the kingdom of God. That's why, church, the Lord Jesus Christ wants me to say this to all of you. Be a witness. Amen? Be a witness for Jesus. He wants you to testify. Church, it is much better to say, Pastor Louis, I can lift more than 350 kilograms of weights, and I witness for Jesus. Amen? Pastor Louis, I can speak 20 different languages, and I am a witness for Jesus. Pastor Louis, I, I am one of the best singers here in church, and I am a witness for Jesus, and I allow that the gift that God has given me for the propagation of the gospel. Church, you know, church, Jesus Christ is coming back. Jesus Christ is coming back. You allow yourselves to be channels, to be witnesses for Jesus Christ, to be channels of God's gospel. Amen? It's good to push your kids, your children, to be good in academics. And I have nothing against that. It's good to push them in sports and inspire them to do more for their life. But it's, it is much, much better to include the gospel and share Jesus to them and tell them about the love of Jesus and tell them about eternal life and tell them about heaven and tell them about Jesus dying for them and tell them about Jesus resurrecting for them and tell them about all the fulfillment of the promises of Jesus Christ. I praise God that, that my family, my loved ones witnessed for me. Did you know? From 1993 to 1998, I became an atheist. I decided to become an atheist. 1993 to 1998, I stopped going to church. But my family, my mom and dad, my siblings, they continued to witness about Jesus. And my dad, from 1993 to 1998, prayed for me every day at 4 o'clock in the morning at the altar of his church. And he prayed for me and said, Acts 16.31 says, you and your household will be saved. And I know you love my son. I know you will save my son. And then one day, June 23, 1998, I came home and went to my parents and told first, the first person that I told about what I experienced was my dad. And I said, Dad, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And then my dad cried and looked up to, to the heavens and said, now I can die. Now I am ready to go because my youngest son accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And then my, my mom joined, joined him and said, we are ready to go, son. We are ready to die. And we are ready to go to heaven because we are now sure that our youngest son our youngest child will go, we will have the is now now have the assurance of eternal life. Church, continue to witness, don't give up. Amen. Allow yourselves to be a channel of God's blessing. Allow yourselves to be to be uh, to be the, an overflow of God's grace, of, of God's love and eternal life. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. I want to end this this message by uh, 
singing to you a portion of uh, the United Methodist Youth Fellowship medley, uh, which I learned around when I was five or six years old. I was I heard my my uh, my uh, my siblings who were much older than me during that time. I heard them singing it, United Methodist Youth Fellowship medley. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. And thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And whatever you do for the kingdom of Jesus Christ, that will last forever and ever and ever and ever and the Lord will just say when you will face him when I face him and we will face him the Lord will just they will just say well done my good and my faithful servant church be a witness for Jesus amen let's give the Lord a round of applause hallelujah glory to God hallelujah in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. May I ask everyone to please stand.